Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Trying to try told, try told him I'm a beast, I'm bud. A What's up, gang? Welcome back to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about a few secrets of uncommon achievers. And so this sparked my mind through listening to a podcast of a guy. He's actually a pastor, Jonathan Shuttlesworth, and the podcast was called "Taking Your Place at the Top." And he went into a few, and one of them was uncommon achievers decide to do something that's never been done before. And so basically the, the the idea and the inspiration can come from anywhere, but you have to either do something that's never been done before or do something in a way that it's never been done before. And so when you think about doing something that's never been done before, breaking records faster than most, you know, more knockouts than anybody, more Super Bowls than anybody, doing it younger than 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 everybody or anybody that's ever done it breaking records doing something that's never been done before you're that uncommon or you do something in a way that it's never been done before watching you know mike tyson win a world title at 20 years old and with, with brutal knockouts or watching tom brady you know win multiple super bowls playing in over you know 10 10 super bowls and uh hoist gracie you know coming into the uh united states with bring in the UFC and MMA, you know, b before they're not necessarily doing something that's never been done before, but they're, he's doing it in a way that it had never been done before. Before that, a lot of the world thought as, you know, fighting and, in, in uh, martial arts more as, as kicking and, and punching it hadn't really seen submissions, um, arm locks and chokes before. And so, you know, Mike Tyson, nobody had ever seen it that mean that young, you know, before and, and small really to be a, a heavyweight. Dennis Rodman, all he did was rebound, doing something in a way it's never been done before. And so he made his money and in, in fame off of just doing that that one thing. Steph Curry, lights out, you know, shooter. And so you you gotta ask yourself, what are you trying to do? If you want to go to the next level, if you want to be that uncommon, we got to do something that's never been done before in your business, in your world, or do it in a way that it's never been done before. Next thing he said is, is um, uncommon people value time differently. And so the example he used was when Solomon was building a temple for God. It was actually, I think, in 1 Kings uh, chapter 6, verse 1. I am engaged in great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come meet with you? Was the exact scripture. And so this is one that gets tough for people as you climb, as you accomplish more, as you go to new heights the the higher you go the less time that you typically have the more careful that you need to be with the time that you're giving out and not everybody's going to understand that and so you're going to have to learn to say no to certain things and, and you're going to wish that you could do it all sometimes but you're going to have to be careful what you're putting your time into and so appointments that that you end up having with people you know this is one people that you meet with or people that want a meeting with you there should be a start time and an end time so you already know how much time that you're spending there and it doesn't end up getting wasted and then also have some topics like what do we want to accomplish in this meeting not just meeting with people just to be meeting with people and i'll give you an, an example now of you know i i got people that'll say hey let's go to dinner sometime Let's let's grab dinner sometime. I don't have time to grab dinner. I really don't. When I look at the 365 days in a year and how many days that I travel for business, how many things that I have, you know, things going on for my life, my family, my, you know, this and that. When, when I look at how many nights are actually left to go to dinner you know, sometimes I'll be on the road out of a month and I'll I'll be gone out of 30 days. You know, you're gone 10 days. And so out of those other 
20 days, how many of those days do you think you need to be putting into your business at home where it may cause you to, to have a couple evenings or a couple nights? And then how much time are you left to really put your kids to bed or be there when it's time to put, put the kids down? And when I look at those, it's like, man, I really don't, I got to be very careful about when I'm giving up my evenings because I could add up so many evenings that are already gone. And so people not, they might not understand that. And so you may have to do lunches over dinners. You may have to do breakfast instead of dinners with people. You got to be careful of, of if you're pouring into people, are you pouring into people as a leader that are, that is going to be a multiplier? Are you are you just allowing anybody to get your time for any any reason? You know, I think what'll help you is understanding that you could lose money and get it back, but you can't lose time and, and get it back. And I think one thing that is that is that that can help you is putting a value on your time. So how much money do you make? How much money do you want to make? Like how much money are you about to make within the next, like what, are, what is your value? Where do you see it going? And then put a dollar per hour on it. So let's say you say, hey, you know, I, I, I view myself as a $500,000 a year person, okay? Well, that's 10,000 a week. And, you know, when I'm working, you know, I'm working 40 hours a week, okay? So 40 hours into 10,000, is $250 an hour. So if somebody's asking you for four hours of your time, it's an hour to drive there, an hour to drive back, two hours at the thing or whatever, that's four hours, that really costed you $1,000. Or if I'm going to cut the grass and it's going to take me an hour or two hours to cut the grass, you're worth $250 an hour. That's $500 of your time you're losing that if I spent $30 and paid somebody 60 bucks to cut the grass for those two hours, I would essentially make $190 because I can't multiply. I only have so many hours in a day, so many hours in a week. So how many of those things am I going to take away if I'm, if I'm doing five hours of things that I could hire somebody else to do, where could I use those five hours? Is it, man, my time would be better off spent those five hours with my kids because I already don't spend enough with them as it is because I work so much. So I value the five hours with them over five hours of cutting the grass and painting the roof or whatever. And maybe that's not it. Maybe, maybe it's, well, I can, pay somebody to do those things for five hours, but I'm going to go mentor people for an extra five hours. I'm going to work in my business for an extra five hours. And for that extra five hours, I ended up making $1,500 because I put the five hours in and I, and it only costed me $150 to pay somebody to get some of these things done for me. And so it's, it's understanding and valuing your time that, you know, I think the exception to that is and you'll see this out of a lot of busy high net worth people it's not that they're lazy it's that they understand the value of time to where i'm not going to waste five ten hours a week on something that i could pay somebody for something to do that's less than what my time is worth that i could put that time to, and go make more money into it because time is what time is time is money and the more you achieve, the more valuable that your time becomes. So now if you start making $2 million a year, now that turns into $400, $500 an hour, as, or $1,000 an hour, excuse me. Now, So now if somebody's saying, oh, can you come drive here? Do you want to meet for dinner? And the dinner's four hours, that's $1,000 an hour. Is that dinner worth $4,000 to you? Because that's $4,000 worth of your time. Then you got to understand you can't meet with everybody. Everybody's going to want to meet with you. You can't meet with everybody. You got to be careful who, when you're taking meetings, who you're taking meetings with, what is the purpose of the meeting without coming off, you know, but nobody's ever going to be all the way happy with what you do. You're never going to please everybody if you want to please everybody. 
sell ice cream. That's why we were trying to sell some ice cream over here. But the, 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 the only way you're going to make people happy all the time is selling ice cream. You're pretty still going to probably have a couple people pissed off. And so, you know, I, I saw a post recently also when it comes to time and it made me think of some beasts of uncommon achievers like Natalie in, in, in my office who started from the bottom. Now we're here with me. She started $10 an hour, 20 hours a week, and now she's my HBIC. She's our COO. She, she runs the deal for us and, and uh, the back office stuff, everything not sales. And he, the quote said, if you want to get something done quickly, ask the busiest person you know. If you ask someone who has all the time in the world, it'll take them all the time in the world. Because the busy people are the ones that accomplish stuff. And, and the winners find a way to win. And so it blows my mind how this woman works beyond 40 hours. Because I require, I'm always asking questions and need her for stuff on the weekends and evenings and this and that. So she works all the hours. Plus she's married happily as a wife that has a husband and then also has children, three children, young children, baseball games, sporting events, all this. How on earth as a mother of three wife full-time beyond full-time, can she still handle things if I need it done and I'm really like in a bind and I really have to get it done, I would throw it to her all day long over people that don't have kids, don't have a husband, don't have all that. She finds a way to get it done and she'll get it done and not take all year long to do it. So if you want to get something done, give it to the busiest person, the people that execute stuff. Uncommon achievers handle adversity well. I think... You know, recently we had an opportunity to hear from David Tyree, um, play for the New York Giants when they upset uh, the Patriots, I think two separate times, won a Super Bowl. But he's known as the helmet catch. He won an ESPY award, um, which I believe is the best play in all of, all of sports or all of football. And he, he caught the ball on his helmet. And it was a critical moment in play. And he talked about, how much adversity he went through all that year. He was hurt coming into camp, missed the first two games of the season, was only playing special teams, didn't really feel like he was being looked at as a wide receiver, although the, he, he wanted to prove himself and wanted to play as a wide receiver. His mother passed away that season where he had to miss a game or two, and then he comes back in, and because he didn't quit, didn't give up, most people could have, packed it in, he ends up making one of the biggest plays in Super Bowl history. Uncommon achievers handle adversity well. Whether it's a breakup with a girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife issue, personal life issue, death in the family, something unexpected, having a hater, having a setback, having something happen. They just handle adversity well. Marcus, first person that was a mentor to me in this business, I come in, my, my friend Marcus, he had just lost his dad and his brother, his older brother and his dad, who he was close to within a six-month period, right before getting into the business. But he didn't let it stop him. And so if, if you want to be uncommon out there, I just want to encourage you to just, I'm not saying think negativity into existence, but you got to plan and prepare for the worst and hope for the best. What are the things that could cripple you mentally and plan for them already, how you're going to respond when that day comes? None of us listening to this podcast is going to be here probably 100 years from today. Every single one of us is going to the similar place. We're going to be not on this earth, at least. So every death is a part of life as much as it sucks. So that's going to be one we're going to have to get through. Haters is going to be one we're going to have to get through. Injuries, obstacles, setbacks, things out of our control. 
if you want to be uncommon on your journey, just expect obstacles. Really, it's just, you know, I, I heard a long time ago a saying from a mentor that said, big dreams, big devils, small dreams, small devils. How big is your dream? So if your dream is going to be big, you got to expect big devils, big obstacles, big hurt, big hurdles, big haters, big stress. Sometimes we'll get all bent out of shape when the moment that we're currently in is exactly what we prayed for. Man, please let me be the starting quarterback. Please let me be the starting quarterback. Now you're the starting quarterback and your team's down four points and no timeouts and everybody's looking at you. Please let me be the president of the United States. Let me be until half the country hates me and somebody's always trying to kill me. Sometimes what you prayed for, what you dreamed for, where you wanted to be, you're in that moment and, and then you don't want to handle and take what comes with that position. If you don't want a portion of the country to hate you, don't be the president of the United States. You'll never please everybody. If you don't want the pressure, how often do you hear people say they can't handle the pressure? If you don't want the pressure, don't be a pitcher. Don't be the quarterback. Don't ask to be the quarterback because I can't want the $50 million contract like Patrick Mahomes but not want the $50 million worth of pressure that rides on your shoulder that you can't do what everybody else can do in your mid-20s. You can't go to the same parties. You can't act a fool. You can't make the same mistakes. You can't do the same things. You have to act complete. You have to protect yourself. You have to be able to have 90,000 people screaming at you, wishing that you would do horrible, and you find a way to will your team to victory with all that bad juju looking at you and cameras in your face and people saying he's not that good. You have to be able to handle that pressure that comes with the position. Sometimes people only want the pleasure that comes with the position and they don't want the pressure that comes with the position. If you can handle a little, you can handle a lot. How many of you people out there can really keep it real with yourself and say, yeah, I've been saying that I want this big life, this big thing. But in some of these small moments, I've lost my cool. If I can't trust you yet with a little bit, how can I trust you with a lot? Oh, man, I lost my cool. My bad. I was frust frustrated, had a rough day, which happens, right? But how often? And if you can't, if you had a rough day stressed out to where you can't handle yourself now, but you want to do four times this amount, what makes anyone believe that you're going to be able to handle four times the amount if you can't handle what you currently be a good steward with what you have right now? Uncommon achievers learn how to handle haters well. You got to let it motivate you. You got to learn to take the high road. You got to understand that it comes with the territory. This one was tough for me. I'll give you a couple examples. I don't know if, you know, if there's any basketball fans, you could Google it, but there's a basketball player, Ron Artest. I think he was playing for the uh, Pacers. He changed his name to Meta World Peace. You know, you could change your name, Ocho Cinco. He went Meta World Peace, and somebody was upsetting him, pissing him off in the crowd, talking shit to him. And he ran up in the stands and was like choking one of the fans. Now, I know there was a bunch of people out there like, man, I wanted to do the same thing until you get slapped with a big fine and you lose how much money if you if you could have got endorsements and you lost $30 million of endorsements, is it worth it to you as a professional to lose $20 million, $30 million in endorsements to pay $300,000 in a fine? To Is it worth it to let somebody get you out your game? Because guess what's going to happen the next game? 
Next game you go away, somebody else going to have something to say. How many people do you want to give millions of dollars because you lose your cool before you realize this is the life that you chose? Long term, you got to let haters motivate you. Let all the things that people say negative to you, the, the uncommon people, they, they have, whether it's David Goggins or Neil Armstrong or, or, or uh, Lance Armstrong, you look at people, Kobe Bryant, you look at people, period, and they'll, they'll, a lot of people, you hear them talking about people that hated on them and how it, they let it motivate them. You got to let the haters motivate you versus letting them get you down and get you out of your game. Take the high road, compare yourself to people. That's what I, when, when I started getting my first bit of haters and I had to learn to not physically react was when I started to compare and other people would tell me, listen, imagine LeBron James. You think when he goes to different arenas to play basketball, there's not people screaming stuff about his mother. There's not people screaming negative things at him, posting negative things about him. Anybody that's in front of the public eye, they always got people talking sauce. There's always these critics. And you can't go around arguing and fighting with everybody, commenting on the trolls' social media posts and fighting and arguing and trying to defend let those people roll down there in the mud with the pigs and you stay up there with the eagles take the high road let it motivate you kill people with kindness lance uh lance armstrong i was watching recently they were he was talking about how one day this the same guy that's best in best in the world got cancer came back and won I guess he was taking some performance-enhancing drugs like the other 90% of the people all end up admitting was going on. It wasn't like he was a huge bodybuilder. It looked like he was all roided up. But, yeah, I get it. I mean, he made some mistakes or whatever. But he's done a lot of good. And if he did that, what does it matter to me? I would never say to the man, so he said he was walking across the street and all of a sudden a guy looks at him and says, Lance Armstrong, he looks up, he says, F you, with his middle fingers up. F you. And then he said, that there's four other people with him, and those people joined in, and they all started screaming it at, at him, at him. And he's like, I wanted to take off and just punch the guy in the face, he said. And and uh, I left and asked the manager of the, where, the place where, where we were at to buy all of their food, appetizers, anything that they bought, put it on his bill and tell him that it's from Lance Armstrong with love. And he said, you can't forget the love part. You got to tell him with, with love. And that's called taking the high road. That's called killing people with kindness. That's called, it's, it's just a whole nother world when you learn how to start digesting and accepting that your life is going to have haters in it when you start to go to the next level. So I want to encourage you out there to go out there and be uncommon. Put the work in more than other people are willing to put in. Block off the distractions. Learn how to handle adversity. Learn how to handle the haters. Be careful and be protective with your time. And go out there and reach your full potential. Time flies by. Don't let another 10 years go by and you not accomplish everything that you want to accomplish. Don't let another five years go by. I think I heard Elon Musk said, hey, look at your vision for the next 10 years and try to condense it into one. And work like you're trying to get it done in one year. It may not happen, but you'll accomplish a whole lot more. Let's, let's go out there with a sense of urgency and do what the uncommon people do, and we'll see you, we'll see you at the top. Hey, share this with somebody if you think that, that it can benefit anybody, uh, any specific topics that you'd like to hear us hit on or, or uh, things that you'd like to hear people interviewed on, let us know. 
Thank you for your support. Thank you for your feedback. And keep grinding out there. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day.